Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Mari. I'm one of the librarians at Portland Public Library in Portland, Maine, and I'm here today to talk to you about states of matter. Now this is a topic that can sound really confusing if you've never heard about it before, but I think it will make a lot more sense than, you, than it seems because it's actually really easy to understand. First, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it and then we'll read a couple of books on it. So the first thing that I'm gonna tell you is what is matter? And matter is just what makes up everything. We're all made of little bits of matter and matter can be in four different states. Those states are solid, liquid, gases, and plasma. And that's the sort of thing that really makes sense once you hear a little bit about it. So let's dive right into this book. It's written by David A. Adler and illustrated by Anna Raff. Solids, liquids, gases, and plasma. This book is published by Holiday House. Matter is everywhere. Matter is anything that takes up space, even the smallest space, and has some weight even the smallest weight. A rock is matter. It takes up space and has weight. Books, shoes, and footballs are matter too. Chocolate, a chocolate bar can teach you about matter. Take a small bite of chocolate. Of course, it tastes like chocolate. Then place the bar flat on a table and smash it with your fist. It breaks into tiny pieces. Taste some of those small bit, bits of chocolate. They taste like chocolate too. Matter is like that. It's made up of tiny bits and each bit has the same properties as the larger piece. The tiniest bits of matter that have the same properties as the whole are called molecules. Here are water molecules. Each drop of water is made up of trillions and trillions of water molecules. Each water molecule is made up of even smaller particles called atoms. Atom is the bit of an element, one of more than 100 known building blocks of our world. Iron, silver, gold, copper, oxygen, zinc, and hydrogen are all examples of elements. So here is that water molecule again. It is one oxygen atom plus two hydrogen atoms. You might have heard some people in your life call water H2O before, and that is saying two H's, H and H plus an O, two hydrogens and an oxygen. What happens when matter changes form? The molecules that make ice and other solids are bound together. They don't move. The molecules that make water and other liquids are held together more loosely. They flow and move about. Molecules that make up water vapor and other gases are not held together at all. Rocks, pebbles, books, shoes, and footballs are solids, a form of matter that has a definite shape. Even a sheet of paper is a solid. Yes, you can fold it, you can cut it into many pieces, but if the sheet of paper is left alone, it will keep its shape. Solids can be hard or soft. A golf ball is a solid. It's hard. A marshmallow is also a solid. It's soft. The golf ball and the marshmallow might be about the same size, but they don't weigh the same. The golf ball is much heavier than the marshmallow. It has a greater density. It packs more matter into the same amount of space. That's why it weighs more, is because there's more matter, more bits, in, a sm in the same amount of space as a marshmallow. Water, milk, juice, and other liquids take up space and have weight. So they too are matter. But liquids don't have a definite shape. They take the shape of their containers. You can prove this. Fill a glass about halfway with water. The shape of the water in that glass is tall and cylinder shape. Now pour the water into a flat square pan. Now the water is flat and square shape. Liquids take the shape of their containers. Liquids are often measured by their volume or the amount of space that they occupy. 
Liquids change shape when they are poured from one container to another, but their volume doesn't change. If you have two different measuring cups, you can prove it. You can see there's half a cup here and half a cup here. One, pour enough water into one cup so it reaches exactly the half cup mark. Then pour from the first measuring cup to the other. It may look like there's a different amount of water in the second cup, that the volume has changed, but it has not. The second cup, the water level should also exactly reach the half cup mark. So even though they look like different amounts from here to here, they're exactly the same. Just like solids, liquids can take up the same amount of space and have the same volume, but not the same weight. To prove it, you'll need two different types of liquids. Water and cooking oil would work. You'll also need two identical paper or plastic disposable cups, a ruler, a marker, and a postal or food scale. If you don't have a scale, you can still do the experiment. Number one, with a ruler, mark each cup exactly one inch. Fill one cup to the line with water, and then fill the other cup with oil, both to those lines that you made. Now weigh each cup. The cup with the oil weighs less than the cup of water. If you're not using the scale, you can pick up the cup, uh, one cup in each hand. They have the same volume, but they don't weigh the same. The cup with the water should feel slightly heavier. This is because oil is less dense than water. Another interesting thing that you can do with that is if you pour water and oil into the same cup, the oil will float on the top because it, it's not as dense and it weighs less than the water. Gases are a third form of matter. Gases don't simply take the shape of their container, they completely fill whatever container or space they're in. Air is a mixture of gases. It fills every corner of every room in your home, but it's difficult to see the air. Smoke is also a mixture of gases, and it's easy to see the, the smoke. Imagine someone putting food in an oven and forgetting about it. The food would burn and the smoke would fill the room. There would be smoke everywhere. Gases surely take up space, but to be a form of matter, it also has to have weight. Gases have weight, and you can prove it. You'll need a large deflated balloon and a postal scale. Weigh the balloon. Now blow up the balloon. Fill it with air. Weigh it again. The balloon filled with air will weigh more than it did when it was deflated. Air is a mixture of gases and it has weight. Just like with solids and liquids, not all gases weigh the same. You can also learn this from balloons. If you hold a balloon filled with air and let it go, Without wind to blow it around, the balloon would fall to the ground. But if the balloon is filled with helium, instead, it would float up. Air is a mixture of gases. Helium is a gas too, but it's lighter than air. That's why balloons filled with helium float. Gases take up space and have weight. Gases are a form of matter. If you've ever breathed in helium and then talked and your voice was funny and squeaky, that is because it moves faster and has less density than air, and so your voice sounds higher. Matter can change from one form to another, from solid to liquid or from liquid to gas. Ice is the solid form of water. When ice is exposed to heat, it changes from a solid to a liquid. It changes to water. When a pot of water is put on a hot stove, the water boils. Steam rises above the the pot, that steam is water vapor, a gas. When water is exposed to enough heat, it turns to water vapor. Most matters can change states, but for many it takes extreme temperature to change from a solid to a liquid to a gas. Ice will melt or change to water when the temperature rises to just above 32 degrees Fahrenheit or just above zero degrees Celsius. Water changes to water vapor at 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius. For aluminum to melt, to change to a liquid, it must be just over 1,220 degrees Fahrenheit or 660 degrees Celsius. Its liquid form will change to vapor at about 4,000 
480 degrees Fahrenheit or about 2,407 degrees, 70 degrees Celsius. Gold will melt at 1,950 degrees Fahrenheit or about 1,060 degrees Celsius. Its liquid form will change to vapor at nearly 5,000 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 200, uh, 2,970 degrees Celsius. So you can see it takes a lot of heat to get aluminum and gold all the way to their vapor forms. Plasma is sometimes called ionized gas and it is the fourth form of matter. It's gas with an electric charge. Plasma, like gas, does not have a set shape or volume. It fills the entire container. Fluorescent and neon lights are tubes with gas inside. They are turned on when electricity passes to the tube and the gas becomes glowing. Most stars, including the sun, are great masses of plasma. Look around your room. Of course, since you are looking through air, you are looking through matter. And you are looking at matter because anything you can see is matter. Anything that takes up space and has weight whether it's a solid, a liquid, a gas, or plasma. And then there's a glossary at the back. It gives the definition of a lot of words that we learned throughout this book. Let's see the end pages one more time. So that was a great book that told us all about matter and the different states that matter can take on. And the type of matter that they talked about kind of the most maybe was water, which I think is a really great example for you to be able to understand solids, liquids, and gases, because you've probably interacted with ice, water, and water vapor in your life. I have another book called I Get Wet by Vicki Cobb and illustrated by Julia Gorton. What this book is, is it's a lot of examples of experiments that you can do with water, some of which involve looking at the state of matter that water is in. You can try some of these out at home with a grown-up's permission. I get wet. So a lot of these are questions and they're for you to answer. Know the fastest way to cool off on a hot summer day? You get wet. Know the easiest way to get clean? You get wet. Know what happens when you stay out in the rain? You get wet. Water is the stuff that wets you. It's quite amazing. You can see it, you can feel it. But can you answer this question? What shape is water? Here's how you can get your answer. Pour it into a glass. What shape is the water? Pour it from the glass into a bowl. Now what shape is the water? Pour it into other containers in your kitchen. What shape is the water? Water is always the shape of the thing that's holding it. It's flat where it meets the air. If you pour water into a flat surface, it spreads out. It follows itself as it goes down holes and into cracks. It flows. That's one reason why water can wet you, but it's not the only reason. Water can flow because water sticks to itself. Here's a way you can see water sticks, sticking to itself. Turn on the faucet, now turn it almost all the way off, but don't tighten it. You want the water to come out drop by drop. Watch as a drop of water comes out of the faucet. First it forms a bulge, then a tiny bag of water, then the bulge gets longer and longer, stretching until it breaks free and drops in the sink. Perhaps that's why a drop of water is called a drop. The surface of the drop acts like a skin. It's not a very strong skin. When the drop of water gets heavy enough, the skin breaks. If you could slid on the drop, you would see that skin pull together and make the drop become a ball as it falls. Here's another way that you can see that water sticks to itself. Look at a dry paintbrush or a lock of dry hair. The hairs don't stick together. Now dip the paintbrush or the hair in some water and pull it out. Ta-da! All the hairs are stuck together. Water 
wets you because it can flow. It flows because it sticks to itself, even though the stickiness is not very strong. But there's still another reason why water can wet you. Can you guess what it is? Do another experiment to find out. Get a piece of waxed paper, put it under the faucet, take it out from under the faucet and touch where the water was. Is it wet? Surprise, the waxed paper is dry. Put a large drop of water on the wax paper. Lift the paper up at one end and the drop slides around. Can you get it to slide right off the wax paper without wetting it? You bet, water doesn't wet wax or grease or even a duck's back. Ducks' feathers are coated with a kind of grease. That way ducks can stay dry after they dive under the water. Now put a drop of water on a piece of paper. What happens to the drop? Cut a strip of paper towel. Stick the end of the paper towel a little bit of, in a little bit of water and watch what happens to the water. Like magic, the water moves up the paper. Water wets paper because it sticks to the paper. Water likes to stick to paper better than water likes to stick to itself. That's why the water travels up the paper towel. Does water stick to you? Put a drop of water on your hand, rub it around. Water sticks to you. Your skin also soaks up water, but not as fast as paper soaks up water. That's what makes your fingers look all wrinkled when you've been soaking in the tub for a while. Water flows, it sticks to itself, and it sticks to you. That is why it gets you wet. Yay! And that is the end of this book. This book um, is published by um, HarperCollins. So now we've learned a little bit about water. We've learned that it can stick to itself and that it flows. And a lot of those things relate to the thing that we learned about matter, that it can be solid. A solid a matter is anything that takes up space and has weight. And we know that solids are parts of matter that keep their shape. Liquids fill the shape of the container they're in. Gases fill the whole shape, not just the bottom. And plasma is a gas that has electricity running through it. Now there's a really cool song that I that we're gonna close with, which is called Why Does the Sun Shine? And it's by They Might Be Giants. Now the thing is about this song is that when this song was written, people thought that the sun was made of gas. Now remember what they said in the book that gas, uh, plasma is like gas, but it has electricity running through it. So um, a lamp, like the fluorescent flamingo lamp that they showed, has gas in it all the time, but it's not until it has electricity in it that it has plasma in it. So people thought that the sun was just gas. However, we have since found out that it's plasma. This song, still calls it gas, but because we know the truth, it's still okay to sing. So the chorus goes, the sun is a mass of incandescent gas. So we know that incandescent, we know what gas is now, and we know that it's incandescent or glowing because it has electricity running through it, which makes it plasma. And then it goes, a gigantic nuclear furnace where hydrogen is built into helium at temperatures of millions of degrees. Now, do you remember in the book that we read before when it was talking about water and it showed one oxygen and two hydrogens? Well, we know that hydrogen is an element all by itself. And it talked about helium too. Helium is just two hydrogens stuck together. And that happens in the sun. It's so hot that it can take these two hydrogens and stick them together to make helium. That is the chorus, and it comes up a couple times in this song called Why Does the Sun Shine? The sun is a mass of incandescent gas, a gigantic nuclear furnace where hydrogen is built into helium, temperatures of millions of degrees.
a gas, aluminum, copper, iron, and many others. And remember what we learned in that book, that means it's over thousands of degrees Fahrenheit. The sun is large. If the sun were hollow, a million Earths could fit inside. And yet it is only a middle-sized star. The sun is far away, about 93 million miles away, and that's why it looks so small. But even when it's out of sight, the sun shines night and day. We need its heat, we need its light, the sunlight that we see. The sunlight comes from our own sun's atomic energy. The sun is a mass of incandescent gas, a gigantic nuclear furnace, where hydrogen is built into helium, temperatures of millions of degrees. The sun is a mass of incandescent gas, a gigantic nuclear furnace, where hydrogen is built into helium, temperatures of millions of degrees. Of course, again, we know the sun is really plasma, which is what incandescent gas kind of is. So thank you for listening, and I hope you learned something interesting about the states of matter, water, the sun, solids, liquids, gases, plasma, or anything else. Thank you so much for listening. My name is Sarah Mari. I'm one of the librarians at Portland Public Library in Portland, Maine, and I'll see you really soon. Bye.